So today, I just wanted to reiterate something that I said in one of the earlier videos, which is that as you're reading papers, unless you're planning to do the experiment yourself in a laboratory setting, stay away from the methods section at all costs. It's a little bit of an overstatement. Sometimes you do need to dig into the methods just a bit, but for classes that I teach, um, I design all of my assignments such that you can complete the entire thing and should complete the entire thing without having to read a word from the methods section. The paper that I want to use to illustrate this is this one here, um, talking about the way that cells in piriform cortex, which is the um, primary input from the audit, uh, sorry, from the olfactory system, um, receive input. And from the title already, we can see that we're talking about convergent input from different regions of the olfactory bulb. So there are different zones in the olfactory bulb called glomeruli, and multiple zones converge on individual neurons. So if you take one neuron in piriform cortex, you're going to find that multiple different glomeruli are sending axons that converge on that one cell. Um, in their introduction, they describe a little bit of background as they should, um, and even toward the end, they provide a little bit of methods and even a preview of the results and conclusions. Um, this last paragraph of the introduction is actually very, very useful, often almost as useful as the abstract. So in this study, they use brain slice preparation containing both the olfactory bulb and the piriform cortex. So they've got a chunk of brain that has the olfactory bulb still intact and the piriform cortex still intact, and the co connection between them is maintained. Um, they image action potentials using calcium signals. So when a cell fires an action potential, a lot of channels open, including some voltage-activated calcium channels. and so if they have um, a, a chemical inside the cell that changes color when calcium is present, then they can infer the, uh, an action potential by noticing when those cells change color because the voltage activated calcium channels in the cell are open. Um, and so that is really almost all you need to know about the methods. Um, in the results section, they do describe a little bit more about the methods and what you need to know. So again, they're visualizing multiple cells in piriform cortex in response to stimulation of sensory inputs. So they're stimulating the olfactory bulb and observing the, the activity in multiple cells. The way that they observe this is by filling up these, these cortex cells with a calcium indicator. That is a, a, a molecule that changes color when the cell gets calcium into it. And again, calcium comes in from action potentials, so they're inferring when an action potential occurs by when they see the calcium come in and the change in color. Um, so they're, st again, stimulating mitral cells, which are part of the olfactory bulb, and seeing a change in fluorescence in layer 2-3 of piriform cortex. That is literally all the methodology you need to know. You can see they even diagram it out, although that's not necessary, and not all papers will diagram their methods. But you can see the um, the uh, the calcium transients, the calcium changes that they observe in their cells, um, and you can see images of cells where you can see the cells light up as they become active. So all you need to know about the methods is what's their manipulation. In this case, they're stimulating sensory inputs. What's their, what are they observing? Um, well, they've pre-filled the cells in piriform cortex with a calcium indicator, and they observe the calcium changes and use that to infer when those cells in piriform cortex are firing action potentials. Um, so that's all you need to know for methodology for this paper, and we got it all just from the introduction and the results.